I tried the most popular keyboard on Amazon, so you don't have to. Why so you don't have to? Well, let's just start with this. Did that not mean anything to you? Well, howdy hey, I'm Hippio Tech, and I can explain. This is the RK61. It's Amazon's choice, but is it good? Now, I don't think the RK61 is worth it, but I'm gonna challenge myself to make it as good as possible. And maybe I've proven myself wrong along the way? Speaking of proving myself wrong, I don't think there's any way I'm gonna hit a million subscribers next year, but hey, prove me wrong. Hit subscribe right now, it's free. <laughs> Now, this story starts with me Black Friday shopping and seeing the RK61 for a record-breaking $40. I happened to notice it was Amazon's choice and one of the most popular keyboards on Amazon, so I had to give it a shot. But is this keyboard literally only popular because it's so cheap? Like, I looked at its price graph and it hovers between $40 to $50 max. Well, speaking of max, I reckon they really maxed out on the accessories here for such a cheap board. Okay, I kinda just wanted a segue, but honestly, the cable is a fine quality. And what's even more impressive is they give you some spare switches. Wait, spare switches? Does that mean this thing's hot swap? Wait, 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 even better, a switch puller? Hold on, so you're telling me for $40, this thing is hot swap and they give you a switch puller? I gotta put that to the test. So now I'm a little bit excited to get this thing open uh, and throw away the manual, see you later. So let's talk about the specs a bit and try and break apart why people might want this keyboard so much. It has over 10,000 reviews on Amazon, which is insane. Now, as I mentioned before, it comes in between 40 and $50. And it's a mechanical keyboard that sits in the 60% profile. This means you're gonna have to give up some things that some gamers care about the most, like arrow keys and the F keys. Uh, ignore the hair, ignore the hair. Oh, now you're looking at it more because I pointed it out? Hmm, well, why don't you go comment? Ooh, nice hair, Hippiotech, very good hair. Thank you for growing it out for me. Go ahead. <clears throat> Anyways, this keyboard isn't wireless and it has no flippy feet. Also, as you can see here, it's entirely plastic except for the plate, which we'll get into later. And the overall build quality leaves much to be desired, but it's cheap. It's cheap. I'm going to cut it a little bit of slack here. Now you're probably still wondering, Hippio, why so I don't have to? What's so wrong with this keyboard? Well, it's fine and it's probably fun to mod, but let's talk about the elephant in the room. It sounds absolutely terrible. Now, some of you might say, Hippio, that's actually not that bad. Well, eh, you're kind of right. It's not that bad, but it's also not great. And for a little bit more, you could get a board like the Epomaker TH66 that'll give you a lot more bang for your buck. Or even some of that new stuff from Akko, um, video soon. Wait, okay, it's hot swap. It's hot swap, we figured it out, but north facing LEDs. Those are a bit of a bummer, because if you swap out the keycaps, your life is going to be rough. Essentially, if you use Cherry Profile keycaps, there'll be a little bit of chattering. That's it. But speaking of chattering, let's chatter about the RGB on this board. It's fine, but it sits at a refresh rate that really kind of hurts my eyes, because it's just subtly blinking a lot. There's a couple different modes, but overall it's not that bright and leaves a little bit to be desired. I honestly just liked it the most on this white mode, because then it wasn't so flickery. Now it's nice to have RGB in a board this cheap, but it's checking some more boxes. But you're thinking, okay, at least it's probably nice to type on. Well, overall, the typing experience is pretty rough here, and I'm gonna tell you why. In my humble opinion, these ABS shine through keycaps are absolute garbage. Like, they sound absolutely terribly high pitched compared to these nice PVT keycaps. Just, just listen to that. So that's gonna be the first thing to go for me. So I think these keycaps are decently irredeemable. And on this board, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it to sound very good or feel very good to type on. They just feel so awful. Now, here's the next reason why these really just aren't that great. These switches you're looking at here, these are Royal Kludge Reds. The board also has an option for blues and browns, but I think reds are the best of the three. In general, they just feel a bit scratchy, they sound a bit pingy, and they leave a lot to be desired. Even some budget KTT switches would make this board a lot better, but I'm gonna be opting for something else and we'll get into that soon. But speaking of getting into things, uh, let's get into this keyboard. Now I'll have all the products linked down below or with the view products button in the bottom left, but I just used my handy dandy wow stick to break this thing open. And as we can see, there was actually some foam installed in this thing already. I'm starting to change my mind ever so slowly. The foam in between the plate and PCB is great, but I can't even imagine how bad it would sound without it. Now, I'm no stranger to modding budget boards. Check out the other video I did on the most popular keyboard from Amazon, a uh, link in the top right. But this time I'm taking it a different direction. 
I recently had a lot of success using Killmat, which is a automotive dampener is the best way to describe it, and layering it in plastic cases like this. Well, not really layering, just kind of like gloop globbing it because it's adhesive. So here I go, I gloop glob and it's gloop globbed. Leave a like if you also gloop glob. Now this is gonna be filling a lot of the dead space and getting rid of that really hollow plastic sound. Like the foam that was in there did some, and I'm also adding a little layer of paper over so I don't get any interference between the PCB and that metal sheet. And then I decided to just add the foam that was already in there, in there, which so the paper was kind of redundant, but hey, it all fit back together perfectly. There was a lot of room in there. Speaking of a lot of room, there's a lot of room in my heart for one of my favorite switches, Gateron Milky Yellows. Now you can get a pack of these for around 20 bucks, which is a really good value, but you do need to lube them yourself. So it's not that great if you don't have lube. Don't know what I'm talking about though, then check out my video on the top right. And wait, 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 we're not putting on the switches yet. Don't try and do your magic, Hippio. No, no, no. We have to replace the stabilizers. Now, this step of modding this keyboard is pretty optional, but I'm gonna be doing it anyways, as I've got some Duroc plate mount stabilizers that I've lubed myself. We lube switches and stabilizers so that they feel smoother, they don't tick, they don't rattle, they don't make pinging noises, and just overall, better experience. Okay, now with those installed, you can do your magic, Hippio. Go ahead, go for it, buddy. Here you go. Wow, nice, all the switches are on. Now, one reason that I really like boards like this is because they give you so much potential to customize them. But overall, some boards are just so much more potential. Like, there's no way that this board is gonna sound that great, right? Once I get it done, there's no way. It's still gonna sound like plastic. It's still gonna sound cheap. I'm not gonna eat my words at all. Speaking of not eating my words, check out these nice keycaps. Ah, dang it, that was a bad segue. Ah, I'm eating my words again. Oh, wait, no, it worked. Now with a little bit of magic, the keycaps are on the board and you're looking at what I could call a finished board. Now, let me just run you through the vague pricing that I did to customize this thing. The keycaps were $24, the switches were $24, and wait, that's basically it. Now you could add an extra 20 bucks or so for modding materials, which I'll have linked down below. But overall, we're looking at around $100 for this full build. Now, is this gonna be better than something like the Epo Maker TH66 or other boards like the Keychron View 1? Eh, I mean, the gasket mounting is gonna make it a little bit of a better typing feel. And I think overall, you're gonna get more value with those, but something like this, you know what? I'm gonna say it. Even if it ends up sounding bad, it's not a terrible option. I kind of eat my words. If you're just getting into keyboards, maybe something like this isn't actually a bad idea because if you mess up and break the board for some reason, hey, you're only out $40 and that's a lot better than 300. But maybe the so you don't have to is so you don't have to go through the trouble of figuring out how to make it good on your own. Hey, we did it, we went full circle. But speaking of circles, you're probably running in circles trying to figure out if this thing sounds good. Now. I'll leave you with the sound test, but let me just say, I was wrong. This thing ended up sounding so good. Granted, you know, I'm a keyboard guy or whatever, so I'm good at keyboards or whatever. But if you're surprised as well, then I guess leave a like and subscribe for more weird keyboard videos.